Hi, I'm Mayor Jay Tipsheray, and welcome to this edition of Chandler Inside Now. Today, it's my pleasure to have in studio a very special guest, the head football coach of our own Arizona Cardinals, Coach Bruce Arians. Coach Arians, thank you for coming out today. Uh, it's my pleasure, Mayor. This is great. We appreciate it. I thought uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the Cardinals, obviously, and we're going to talk about your foundation, but I thought maybe we'd start out with maybe some of your early history, like how you got involved with football. You were a high school football quarterback, mm -hmm. and you played at uh, Virginia Tech, and so maybe a little of those early days. Yeah, I was uh, I was one of those guys. I played all sports, you know, but uh, started out when I was eight years old playing football. Uh, the first game I was a center, and from then on out I was a quarterback. Yeah. And it stayed that way from eight years old all the way till I was finished playing at Virginia Tech. And uh, had everybody that I grew up looking up to mm -hmm. was named Coach. And now that's you. Well, that, that, I think it had a lot to do with what I wanted to do when I went away to college. I thought teachers were rich, first of all. <laughs> you know? And uh, I always want to be a teacher and a coach. Right, right. So you, you stayed after your... Uh, Hokey career, and you were a graduate assistant there? Yeah, we, uh, my fifth year, Coach Jimmy Sharp came from Alabama right. and basically changed my whole life around. Right. You know, there's always two or three people that, that influence your life, and, and Jimmy was, uh, was a big one for me, learning how to coach the, the right way, and then he took me under his wing. John Devlin was the other who recruited me to Virginia Tech. Right, and so Jimmy was the new head coach that you did your... I did my uh, graduate assistant work with, and we had an unbelievable staff. We had Charlie Pell, Danny Ford, Nelson Stokely, who all became head coaches. Right, right. Charlie had gone to Clemson, and the next year Danny left and went to Clemson, so I got his full-time job and, yeah. uh, and uh, was very fortunate. Yeah, because I think he won a national championship. Danny won the Clemson. national championship, yeah. yes, he did. Yeah, so you did, uh, the, from Virginia Tech then, and obviously you said, hey, I like coaching. This is kind of maybe my calling. Yeah. <laughs> where, where was the next step? I had an old equipment manager named Luke Linden. He said, you, you want to be a coach, huh? He said, you better build your house on wheels. <laughs> and, and we started moving. We went from there to Mississippi State. Then I had the great pleasure of working with Coach Bryant at Alabama his oh, last two years. Wow. And um, that opened the doors for me to become a head coach at 30. And that was at Temple? That's at Temple. What year was that? 1983. To yeah. 1988, and uh, great six years, still really, really close to all those guys. And mm -hmm. every time I see Temple on basketball or football, I'm rooting for them. And uh, they had a great year this year. Yeah, they did. So you were there six years. Mm -hmm. And then after Temple, is that when you made the That's when we to... made the move to the pros. Yeah. And I went to Kansas City with Marty Schottenheimer and uh, had four great years with him. Went back into to college. I thought I was going to be uh, – interim head coach type of thing at Mississippi State and Coach Cheryl never left. Yeah. You know, then I, I moved on, went to New Orleans, um, back to Alabama for a year, then to Indianapolis with Jim Moore, and that was really when everything clicked when I got a chance to coach Peyton Manning his, his rookie year. So you were at Indianapolis or the first time when when uh, Mora was the head coach. Jim Jim Moore, Bill Pullian, that regime started. We drafted Peyton Manning the next year, Adrian right. James, and uh, grew that the foundation of that team. Yeah. Uh, then I left and became the offensive coordinator of the Cleveland Browns. What year was that you went to Cleveland? 2001, I believe. Okay. Your your whole forte has been the offensive side too. Way, I understand. Yeah. I know at the Cardinals it's the offensive side among other things. But so you were offensive quarterback I've coach, quarterbacks, or? running backs, tight ends, receivers, all in the NFL, and been an offensive coordinator. Yeah. And at some point you went to Pittsburgh. Went to Pittsburgh from Cleveland for eight great years, three Super Bowls, won two of them. Unbelievable relationships with, with Ben Roethlisberger, Heinz right. Ward, Alan Fanick, a lot of great, great players. And I uh, was there with Bill Cowher and Mike Tomlin. You, uh, you've coached some pretty good quarterbacks, like pretty great quarterbacks, <laughs> actually. Been very, very fortunate to have been around Peyton Manning, Timmy Couch, who always gets left out. I thought Tim Couch, Tim Couch took the Browns to the Cleveland. playoffs. The only time, I mean, the only time they'd ever been to the playoffs. Then he broke his leg in the last game. Right. Um, Shelley, Kelly Holcomb with him, and then Ben Roethlisberger and Andrew Luck. So you got a couple of rings. Got two rings and real close to a third, but we didn't match it. Yeah. So uh, do you ever 
kind of flash the, one of those rings to the your your current team? No, I never wear the one where we beat the Cardinals. Only the Seahawks. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. You were on the team that, that beat us. Yeah, I was calling the plays uh, on that last drive. Wow, what a what a drive. What a drive. He almost got sacked in the end zone. Oh, yeah. the it really was crazy drive because I don't think Arizona realized Hines couldn't even run. His knee was shot. He was a decoy out mm -hmm. there. Nate Washington had separated his shoulder. Mm -hmm. So everybody, San Antonio Holmes and Heath Miller were the only guys healthy enough to catch the ball. Yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable. So then you ended up back in Indy as a, an assistant coach again. Mm -hmm. That was the year that Pagona had to get had to get his cancer treatments. And yes, I, I left. Off. I uh, got released in Pittsburgh and uh, was going to retire. And Chuck called and uh, offered me the coordinator's job. It was like deja vu. Back in Indianapolis, Peyton was leaving. We drafted Andrew Luck. It was, it was starting right. another regime all over again. Right. And then Chuck was stricken with leukemia Yeah. Uh, after the third game. Uh, Mr. Ursay asked me to take over and be the head coach. Uh, I never took that title. So we have a head coach. I just take on some more leadership responsibility. But I asked him that we keep the light on in his office yeah. and never turn it off until he came back as a symbol to our team, you know, that he was fighting and that we had a head coach. His seat on the bus was never sat in. His locker was dressed every Sunday. And uh, so it was a magical, magical mm -hmm. year. And it led to this opportunity in Arizona. Yeah, and I'm going to chat about that in a minute. Did you get coach of the year that got, year? Got, as and I know got you coach did. of the year as assistant coach of the year and head coach of the year. Yeah, unbelievable. Because then you also got in, in Arizona, you got one of Received those. it again in Arizona my first year. So what was the NFL missing? Because you kind of toiled a long time before you got that opportunity with the car. Yeah, what do I, you think? I it's think weird sometimes, how that works. sometimes you can be too brutally honest. And, uh, and I've never, I've never been uh, one that pulls punches and, and, and tried to hide behind things. And um, they used to do interviews, camera interviews, and uh, I guess I didn't do a very good one. Yeah, because it was, it was, you know, I mean, relatively speaking for a coach, it was late. I mean, we're similar oh, gosh, age. Yeah. Yeah. But for you to get your first coaching job, so how did that all come about? You had that great year in Indy. You, you guys... Had a great year in Indy, and then we we lined up six interviews. Chicago was the first ones to ask, so we went there first. Mm -hmm. um, while I was in Chicago, four, four or five dropped the interview process. And uh, I truly was not going to interview in Arizona. You know, Ken Wisenhunt was a dear friend. Mm -hmm. And also had Pittsburgh Ru connection Ru there. Russ Grimm and Kevin Spencer and, and Matt, guys I won the Super Bowl with, Ray Horton. And I wasn't going to keep any of them, you know. And uh, so it was going to be very hard for me to do that. Uh, I actually called Kenny uh, before I came for the interview and uh, and asked him about it. And uh, he said, oh, you deserve it. You and Michael will get along great. and You need to come in and try it. Yeah, he was professional about that. No, he's the best. Yeah. So you came out here, you interviewed, and you got the job. And I, all I ever hear about, especially this year, I think you guys went to Chicago again this year, mm -hmm. but is... They keep kicking themselves because they didn't hire you. At least that was. I'm the sure way. glad they didn't because it's like waking up in paradise every day out here. Yeah, yeah, we're we're glad you. So you got hired, and yeah, I mean, yeah, the Cardinals had had a couple of rough years in a row after the the Super Bowl run of 2008, I believe. So you uh, you came out of the box that first year and ten and six. We were very close. You know, we lost the game in Philadelphia. That came back and lost the tiebreaker. And then uh, we learned from that. And uh, each year we've grown a little bit. And uh, obviously last year was very disappointing to get so close and right. not make it to the Super Bowl. But again, we learned some things and we have the core of our football team coming right. back. You know, as you, as you move, I mean, you guys achieved a, yeah, you were 10 and six and then you went and missed the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Then you went 11 and five. Mm -hmm. And this year, 13 and three. So you've had this, this trajectory that you've been on. Um, it's been pretty spectacular, but you've raised the bar too for the expectations. Right, it was fun this year when our, our fans got a little disgruntled because we weren't active in free agency yeah. and wanted to know why. So because we have a pretty damn good team now, we don't have to go get them. Yeah. We can pick and choose the ones we want. And then Steve pulled off that great trade for Chandler Jones, and yeah. uh, so we've had a great off season. Yeah, that was a that was a a great uh, acquisition Chandler Jones for you guys. So as you got to the this year when you played um, 
Carolina in that championship game, and they had a pretty good day that day. Did you say, okay, to get to that next level, maybe we need a couple pieces here or there? We, we, need, we needed to improve a couple areas, but the biggest thing for us was to be in that situation, mm-hmm. you know, to be a part of it. Now, uh, we did not play well. It'd be easy to get the game at home, you know, win enough games to make sure we have it at home. But I think even if we had to go on the road next year, we'll be more and more ready. Yeah. And you got your quarterback all lined up and ready to oh, go. Carson's more than ready to go, yep. Hey, um, before I get into maybe talking about some more Cardinal talk and what have you, I want to talk a little bit about the, Bru- the the Arians Family Foundation. And maybe, number one, I've heard a lot about your foundation. We hear about the golf tournaments and that kind of thing. But maybe tell us a little bit about what that foundation, what its purpose is, what you do. and that Yeah, we uh, once we got the platform of a head coach, uh, my wife has been a CASA, Court Appointed Special Advocate, for over 17 years and uh, was a family law attorney, as she would say, a broken family law attorney. Right. And always felt like the child was the one left out um, that didn't have a voice. And so in Indianapolis, our first time around, she became the attorney for Kids Voice of Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's the children in the foster system, either through abuse or neglect, no fault of their own, but they don't have a positive influence in their life. And the CASA comes in and is the child's voice in the case, what's best for the child. And it's a lot of times the only positive influence uh, that that child will have in their life. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've been watching my wife save these kids one at a time. Right. And, and our motto with our foundation is to save them one at a time. So everything that we do, we raise money for CASA and, uh, and kids' voice. Kids Voice for Casa of Arizona, uh, which we have so many senior citizens in Chandler. Yes, we do. Who are who are be great Casas, and and I, I really would ask if you're bored, and and you're looking for something special to do, uh, we're going to show you two two. You don't have to become a Casa, but if you'd like to become a trained Casa or just a Kids Voice for Casa, you can call these websites or or contact the AriansFamilyFoundation.com. We're and, gonna put uh, all that up on the screen too. For and uh, so we raised money. We, we we wrote a check for over one hundred fifty thousand dollars this year, and we hope to ra- raise much for two hundred thousand for for Maricopa County. And then we have another golf cor- tournament in Georgia. Well, we raised money for Indianapolis, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, and Georgia, where Chris had been a casa in all those places. So that money goes back in, and it helps those kids that pretty much come from from broken homes. Yeah, we have close to 15,000 children in foster care in Maricopa County. Yeah. And uh, and only 1,000 CASAs. Wow. So we need to train more CASAs. And CASAs is a volunteer position, It's right? a volunteer position, yes it is. And that's why you've, um, you've uh, we got the number on the screen and what have you, so that people that want to do that. Can... Yeah, I, I, would, I would beg our, our seniors who are sitting at home and looking for something special to do with their life and who better to be a child's voice than a senior. Yeah, we'll try and uh, uh, promote that a little for you, and hopefully some. Well, I appreciate uh, calls that. Will... You bet. Our do kids, they... our kids need it. Yeah. So, do they work under an organized thing through the county? Then those costs. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And uh, the the great people, our organizations, getting bigger and better. Um, we had the director of child services talk at our, our fundraiser this year and did a great job. And um, you know, it's just. It's something very dear to our hearts. Yeah, good. Well, thanks for all that effort. Like I said, I've, I've heard about that through the years, and uh, thank you and your wife for, for doing that. I'm going to reintroduce the show, and then we'll be right back at you. I'm Mayor Jay Tiptree, and you're watching Chandler Inside and Out today. Our guest in studio is uh, Arizona Cardinals football head coach, Bruce Arians, talking a little bit about his life, talking about his foundation, and obviously talking about the Arizona Cardinals. So, yeah, I had somebody ask me, because you know, you've know you now been a head coach, I think, going on your fourth season, fourth year. What is it that, you know, makes the difference between being a good head coach and maybe those that weren't so good? I mean, and I, I'm not asking Probably you to brag no, about The number yourself. one reason is a good quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> you're t- you're, yeah. as, a, as a head coach, you're tied to that position. Yeah. And we're very fortunate that we have, Carson Palmer and Drew Stanton. Yes. Drew was a huge signing for us this offseason because 
that solidifies that room for us. We know we can win with both those guys and, and put a great defense around them. Um, we have a chance. It's a, you can say what you want. Denver did it with a defense, but for the most part, it, it's a quarterback's league. You, oh, there's no doubt. You, you, can, you can have the greatest defense and you can run the football, but sooner or later, Peyton or Brady are going to beat you. Yeah. Or Ben or somebody. One of the great quarterbacks, Aaron Rodgers, beat us in Pittsburgh, but uh, you have to be able to score points. Right. Yeah. What, and I was going to ask you about Peyton retiring. I mean, what was your take on that? Do you think that was the right decision? Oh, definitely. Definitely for him. You know, he's, he's had a fantastic career. Uh, he, he has some health issues with his neck, and uh, he needs to, to give it up now. The thing for him now is to find that next, that next thing that, that really fires him up because he was a special, special player. Yeah, you were fortunate to be able to coach him among the other His first three team. years, yeah. Um, we like it because you're a coach of an, our team, but also in Chandler we like you because you also live in Chandler, at least your, your uh, seasonal home for the football anyway is in Chandler. And then you also we have a connection, uh, I think they're called State 48, designed your logo, and that's kind of a new Chandler startup business. We recognize yeah. them during the state of the city, but they did yeah, a good job. Yeah, the guys job. over at State 48 came up with a t-shirt that uh, <laughs> I still can't believe, uh, but we've adopted that that is our official logo now, and they have just been fantastic partners. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they're they an up-and-coming... Uh, great, great bunch of young people doing a great job. Yeah. Who hooked you guys up with them anyway? Uh, my son Jake and, uh, and and the guys from State 48 got together and uh, came up with a heck of a plan. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you a little as we're, as we're uh, taping this show, and we'll, we'll run it over the next 10 weeks, uh, alternating with another show. But we're, you, you guys are getting ready for the draft. What kind of preparation goes into that? That's probably a year-round preparation. It really is. We have, we have close to 20 scouts that cover every eligible draft prospect in America. Mm-hmm. Uh, each coach will go he'll get 40 to 50 guys that they think are draftable, and then we'll evaluate them. Our coaches and our scouts get along marvelously. Steve Kime does a great job. And in some organizations, that's what splits the organization, mm-hmm. personnel versus coaching. And with us, it's just Cardinals. Yeah. And uh, we'll get together in the next couple of weeks, and we'll, we'll list our entire draft board and then take our top 120 that we would draft off of. Uh, and then once that's done, when you're on the clock for those five minutes, it's easy. You're going to yeah. take the best player available. So you guys do it that way, not maybe what your top needs are, but maybe your no, the top players. A lot of times if you, you hope that that player would be something you needed. Right. Uh, we're very fortunate this year going into the draft after free agency. I don't think we really need anything better than really good young players. Right. And uh, – so we're, we'll sit there and we'll just take the best play. Once you start drafting for need, you're, 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 you're reaching all the time. Yeah. You're reaching maybe down 20 players right. to a position that, uh, that, oh, yeah, we need a center or we need a corner. You can always get one. You, just don't, you don't have to reach early for them. So you'll put your board together. Here's the best players available. And, and we'll, yeah, turn. we'll go 1 to 120. Yeah. And, uh, and you'll pick accordingly when exactly. it's your turn. Well, that'll be good. You, you mentioned the Chandler Jones trade. That was an interesting trade because nobody thought he was going to become available, but he yeah. was available due to financial constraints in New England. Right. When you get when you get to where New England is and we are right now, you have to budget three or four years ahead of time. Right. And then you never know which players are going to hit that year when they're all going to command high dollars. And they already targeted three other guys. Right. And knew they weren't going to be able to pay him, so uh, we were fortunate, and they were interested in Jonathan Cooper, who I think will be a good player. He's just had bad luck with us. Might be a you good know, change of scenery. Great for him. Se- yeah, great with great move for him. And uh, when that second round comes up this year, I'm going to jump for joy because I'm going to put in Chandler Jones's name in the second round, <laughs> yeah. and it's a great second round pick. Yeah, I agree. He'll be in his contract year. He'll be in his contract year, and Steve and and Mike Disner, our, our capologist, they do a great job yeah. of of making sure we have the money to take care of our guys. We're hoping it becomes even more valuable by getting maybe 15 sacks. That, that would this be year. great for me. So what is the, you deal with a lot of individuals, a lot of players. They all seem to like you. Everything I've read and heard, you're a, you know, a player's coach. 
But what's uh, maybe some of the toughest part of the job? I think about when oh, you have by, to make tough by far the hardest is cutting guys. Yeah. yeah, we're one of the few businesses that hire ninety guys for fifty three jobs, knowing we're going to release the rest. Mm-hmm. And uh, you 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 get to to know the guys, and you spend four or five months coaching them hard and watching them grow, and they don't make the team. You got to call them in, and sometimes the dream is over. Other times, you know, this guy's probably going to get picked up, or we'd bring him back right. in emergency. Uh, but other times, that that dream of, of of a lifetime is over. That's tough. Oh, it's, it, it's the worst two days of my life. Yeah, because you're you know seem like a real people person. So yeah, I get to know these guys, and and uh, as Coach Bryant taught me a long time ago, I coach them real hard, but then I hug them later. Yeah. So fifty three bank the roster. Then mm-hmm. you have your practice squad where you can keep a couple people around eight more yeah um some of your philosophy this year i heard it a lot was no risk it no, no risk, biscuit. No why, risk don't it, you, no biscuit. why don't you chat about that that is uh i guess that's the way i've always lived life you know uh you don't know if you're going to get another day yeah. so live this one to the fullest uh, when i play golf i try never lay up because you can't hit a great shot unless you don't try yeah. i hit a lot of balls in the water <laughs> yeah. yeah well I've appreciated because you know we've it's there's not that many coaches that do it like you do it. Where you know you're airing it out, and that's that's good to see because so long for so long, for whether it was personal or whatever, you know we didn't see a lot of that. And I know maybe other teams did because they had the right quarterback. So it's nice to see it like there, that. There's a time to play the odds, and yeah. there and then there's a time to roll the dice. Yeah. And uh, you know we got criticized a little bit in the Green Bay game for trying to make a first down when everybody else would have. Just ran the ball and made them use their last time out. Uh, I wasn't expecting Aaron to hit two Hail Marys on us. No. Have you ever seen anything like that? Never, my, never in my game? 40 years of coaching. Yeah, that was amazing. Like, two okay, great the players. first one and then the second one. <laughs> right. Like, then Larry tops it. So it was yeah. what a great game for our fans. Yeah, that was exciting. Yeah, yeah it was real exciting. The, the NFL's made a lot of rules changes through the years. Any new ones can maybe come out that we should be This year, the big one is the, the kickoff return. If you don't bring it out, it'll, it'll come out to the 25 oh. um, because of the number of injuries on that single play. And um, we don't want to get rid of the kickoff because it's a historical part of football. Right. And um, But you do have to watch where the injuries are occurring and, and try to modify the rules. The other one is adjacent players chop blocking or blocking low on a defender. Mm-hmm. You can still do it, but one can't hold them up and the other one go low. It used to be you have to be two apart yeah. and not be able to do it. And uh, so the defensive lineman will be happy about that one. So the kickoff will go like college, where it's if you don't up. bring it out, you'll go to yeah. the 25, which yeah. that it's, makes sense. And they've already restricted that a lot through the last 10, 15 years. With yeah, and our kickers are so good. They're kicking it eight, nine yards deep, and our guys are still bringing them out. And right. like David Johnson did in Chicago, you take them to the house sometimes. Yeah, yeah, those have been those are exciting plays, and they try to minimize the the risk of injury because yeah, the open field running full speed of a, of eleven on eleven is, is bigger collisions. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you a little bit. We got about five minutes left about the concussion issue in the NFL and the protocol and all that, and get your take on. What what you're thinking about uh, how you guys are handling? Well, yeah, I think I think the NFL is doing a great job with it. Our doctors uh, here at Barrows that we, that we use are, are amazing. Mm-hmm. The protocol now uh, is so much better than what it was. Uh, the new helmets that are coming out are, are really uh, exciting for me to see. Uh, but I think it's still a very very safe sport, and uh, and I trumpet. I got a little trouble last week because I used the word fool of parents instead of foolish. Yeah, because of what this game can do for them, and but I was correct on my number of injuries. Right. I, I was quoted in the paper about high school, but I don't think there's any eight to twelve year old high school students. I'm not, and, yeah, you know, yeah. but uh, the uh, it's a great game, yeah. and and I think it's great for all ages. Yeah, and you got some big people playing that game. They do, and uh, you know, and, and you, when you're younger, they always have the weight limitations, and uh, mm-hmm. they are our young coaches uh, here in Arizona are all being certified in heads up football. Yeah. And, uh, which is great for the game. Yeah. So we're heading into the, the 2016 uh, season. Um, it'll start here in July. It'll be right around the corner. But what uh, can the fans expect in 2016? 
hopefully more of what they saw in 15 and just go a little bit further. It and was, uh, it was, uh, we have a very good football team. We had something happen this offseason I've never seen. We had two players turn down a lot of money to stay with the Cardinals. Yeah, and, the uh, tight end, I read Jermaine about turned down 10 million, and then Chris Johnson turned down 4 million to stay on our football team because they know how close we are. And, uh, and not just to winning, but how close we are in our locker room. We have a great yeah. group of guys who care about each other. And uh, it, it's gonna be fun. We'll, we'll add some pieces in the draft and, um, yeah. and see if we can get off to a good start and finish it off for a Super Bowl ring. How do you like the schedule? I mean, you know who you're playing. We know who we're playing play. and it's gonna be tough. It's yeah. gonna be very tough. And uh, depending on how it, I hope we get Buffalo in September and Miami in December, but they're liable to flip it on us. So you got the AFC East <laughs> We got sure. the AFC East. We have New England and New York Jets. Todd Bowles gets to come here. Wow. Exciting. Well, I'd like to go on, but I think we've kind of run out of time. But I, I really appreciate I know how busy you are and getting ready for the draft and all the other stuff that goes on. We appreciate you taking a few minutes out oh, of your time. My, my pleasure, Mayor. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate you bet. it. You bet. You've been watching Chandler Inside and Out. Appreciate you observing us today. Until we see you again, take care and be safe. You bet. You bet.